a legislative campaign to allow municipalities around the state to operate banks, which would help finance local public policy initiatives, has stalled in both houses of the Capitol in recent years, prompting a new, more targeted legislative effort, creating a public banking pilot for the city of Rochester. To discuss this initiative, we're joined on the Capitol Press Room by Assemblymember Harry Bronson, a Rochester area Democrat who carries the bill in question. Thank you so much for making the time, Assemblymember. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. So, for starters, from a big picture sense, what is it about public banks that makes sense to you? And for listeners who aren't familiar, can you explain how these are different than the traditional private banks that we think of? So a public bank is a bank that is authorized through the Department of Financial Services. It gets chartered. It's a nonprofit, but the nonprofit is set up by a locality. In this case, a, a city it can be a city or a county. They set it up. They have their public funds that they deposit into the bank, and the bank is required, as the legislation anticipates, is required to use those funds to fulfill the mission and the vision of the municipality. So it's a direct way for a locality to use their assets to invest in communities that will ultimately fulfill the goals and the the mission and the vision of of, uh, that locality. So, um, you know, for instance, there may be a desire to target one particular neighborhood because it's marginalized, it hasn't had a lot of investment, and, and that municipality would like to invest in that. So they could use their assets, partner with credit unions, partner with commercial banks to then offer loans and investments in economic development in that area. So as I mentioned at the top, an effort to create a statewide system of public banks around the state, allowing municipalities to do this if they so chose, has stalled in the legislature. And you are now the author of uh, legislation that would create uh, the Bank of Rochester as a non-for-profit corporation. How did this come about? Sure. So um, yeah, I've been on um, uh, Chair Pam Hunter's bill for a number of years that would establish authorization for any municipality across the state to establish a public bank. Um, that re- hasn't gone very far. So through discussions, we thought maybe if we did a pilot. You know, let's do a pilot in an area that's very supportive of public banking um, and see if it works. And maybe then... Uh, we could garner the support for a statewide approach. So when I say an area that's very supportive, uh, we have um, all of the majority members in the state delegation, both in the Senate and in the Assembly, are sponsors of the proposed Rochester Public Bank legislation. City Council, uh, long before this bill was in existence, had issued resolutions supporting public banking, including when the current mayor was on city council. They issued a resolution supporting it, and then again uh, recently. Now the mayor is 100% on board. I had conversations with him before introducing this bill. He also happens to be a banker by trade, so he really knows this industry inside and out. The county legislators in Monroe County who represent portions of the city, they have all signed on to a letter of support. So a tremendous amount of support. We had one of the most active public bank coalitions, the Rochester Public Bank Coalition, uh, that was involved in pushing the broader statewide approach. Included in that coalition is a small credit union in our area, the Genesee uh, Co-op Credit Union. So a lot of local support. So we thought that this would be the ideal location for a pilot program to prove that public banking actually could be a, a successful tool. Well, if your legislation was to become law and we were to get the Bank of Rochester, what would the potential capacity of a not-for-profit corporation like that be? Is this something that would have access to millions of dollars? Are we talking hundreds of millions of dollars? And do you have any particular sense of how they should be targeting those resources if that opportunity came about? So what would happen is Rochester would authorize a nonprofit to be formed. The nonprofit would be formed at the state level and then would be chartered as a bank through the Division of Financial Services. The nonprofit would run the bank, 
But to directly to your question, the city of Rochester would put funds into that bank to be used for investing in the community. The city of Rochester could also receive funds from the county of Monroe or funds from the federal government. So governmental dollars could be invested into the nonprofit. It would take several hundred million to really make this successful. There's a requirement in the legislation that they've got to fulfill all the regulatory requirements. So their their balance sheets have to look appropriate, the loans that they put out there and things of that nature. So, you know, this would be highly regulated. The difference is it allows the city because the administration, the mayor's office, and city council are required to set up the mission for this nonprofit, and then the board members have a fiduciary responsibility to fulfill that mission. So it would allow the city to say, we have these assets, which right now, um, they don't have a lot of control on how it ultimately gets invested. We have these assets that uh, we can invest in uh, various neighborhoods. So let me give you the reality of the city of Rochester. City of Rochester, of the top five poorest zip codes in the state, we have three of them in the city of Rochester. City of Rochester, one in two children live in poverty. City of Rochester school district, roughly 22,000 student population. On any given day, 2,000 of those students are living homeless. We have a situation where a 10 to 15 minute drive in the city life expectancy, 10 years less. That scenario, that depth of poverty, that disparity uh, from one part of the city to the, to the next is what the city of Rochester wants to address and they want to be able to do that intentionally and directly. And so that's why so many of the leaders in the area are supporting a public bank. Not as the you know, full answer for all of that stuff, but as a tool a tool to address um, communities that have been marginalized, to help small businesses, minority um, and women-owned small businesses, and to uh, have economic development that's going to have a real impact on the citizens of the city of Rochester. Well, before we move on, let me reintroduce you for listeners just joining us. This is the Capitol Press Room, and we're speaking with Assemblymember Harry Bronson, a Rochester area Democrat. So I have to imagine there are listeners right now who are thinking about their own municipal governments and saying, boy, these guys that I've got, they can barely uh, oversee the trash pickup, and we've got potholes that we're still waiting to deal with. A bank? They're going to take on a bank now? I couldn't do it in my community. So why do you think Rochester in particular is up for this uh, task? There's a lot of collaboration in the city of Rochester with business, with um, the nonprofit sector, uh, with government. There's a lot of faith in, in city government right now. But the reality is this is going to be highly regulated to make sure that if a municipality chooses to do this, then there's oversight by the state and there will be regulations that will make sure that it's successful. And what is the alternative to this? I guess what is the status quo? Is the city of Rochester and other municipalities just putting their money into the local Chase Bank and Chase gets to invest that money until the municipality wants to withdraw it? That's exactly what happens is the municipalities deposit their funds in commercial banks. Um, They're not authorized under state law to deposit um, in uh, credit unions, Mm -hmm. something credit unions have been fighting for for years, and commercial banks have refused to allow that get, get through the legislative process. The money would go directly into the public bank. But the difference, status quo right now is we rely on the traditional banks, traditional credit unions, to invest in particular projects. The city doesn't have a lot of say in what, where those investments go. Uh, most of that's determined by developers or you know, through the uh, regional economic development councils and things of that nature. This will allow the city to direct the money into the areas of greatest need. And so that's what we think is going to be the real transformative change here will be that the city can be more intentional on where those investments go. As you push this legislation or the broader public banking's legislation, what do you think of the effort to stop these bills and your colleagues who are lining up 
essentially on behalf of the status quo and are aligned with large corporations. Do you feel like those are good faith uh, objections that they're raising, or do you feel like these maybe aren't necessarily the most grounded and thoughtful uh, opposition? So the, the objections we've received thus far are from the banking industry. The banking in industry wants to keep its territory. It doesn't want to um, authorize a public bank. Um, so I, I can appreciate that. But we know the Civil Rights Act was passed, what, 60 years ago, over 60 years ago? And we know the racial disparity that exists, and, and the city of Rochester is a prime example of that. Um, the, the amount of segregation in the city of Rochester, the amount of um, disparity in income levels and wealth, generational wealth, um, is staggering in the city of Rochester. So what we're doing isn't working. This is uh, an attempt to use a different tool to see if we can put a dent in um, those situations. And um, you know, the, the commercial banks don't like this. Um, I've met with them. Uh, they put out a memo of opposition. Um, their opposition is, you know, one, you can't do it. You don't have the knowledge. Um, two, um, you're not going to be able to securitize it sufficiently to have a real impact. And three, you're taking money away from us, so we're not going to be able to invest as much as we used to. What they're ignoring to acknowledge is the um, legislation specifically says, number one, we're not going to compete with you because we can't do retail banking. So this bank will not do checking accounts, savings accounts, and things of that nature. Two, the legislation requires, requires the public bank to participate with commercial lenders and with credit unions and other in the financial market so that you can collaborate and leverage the, the money that you have to make these loans. And then lastly, I would say that um, they, they're not acknowledging the reality that you know, this entity has to be chartered and will be regulated by the state, just like they are chartered and regulated. Most of them are chartered at the federal level, uh, but some are chartered at the state level as well. Um, we have a memo of support from the Credit Union Association, uh, you know, full transparency, conditioned on one very minor change, which we're willing to make, which means um, that we're including state chartered and federal chartered credit unions. But the credit unions are supportive. We have a local credit union that is supportive, and I had mentioned earlier, has been um, one of the, the major uh, participants in the Coalition for Public Bank. So, um, you know, yes, there's opposition. There's always op opposition when you're trying transformative change. Um, but I'm hopeful that at the end of the day, uh, we get this through. Uh, we use it at, as it's supposed to be a pilot. And we have participation and collaboration with other bankers. And we really help the citizens of the ci uh, city of Rochester. Well, unfortunately, we're going to have to leave it there. We've been speaking with Assemblymember Harry Bronson. He is a Rochester area Democrat. Assemblymember, thanks for visiting us in the studio. Thanks for having us on. Support for the Capitol Press Room provided by the New York State AFL-CIO, a federation of 3,000 unions fighting for working people by keeping New York State union strong. Visit unionstrongny.org for more information. Join us again for Capitol Press Room a production of WCNY Connected, Syracuse.